As soon as I opened my eyes, I knew I was in a hospital. A sheet of paper on my chest rose and fell as I breathed. I held up the note and read, Hi, Claire. You're a sharp Chula Vista in the emergency department because you were confused in the parking lot of Southwestern College. We are here to take care of you and find out why you're confused. Your husband knows you're here. Your car is still at Southwestern. Let us know if you need any help, anything. Today is Thursday, September 11, 2014. Darn, I thought. I was supposed to read my poem at the memorial for 9-11. My fog brain tried to unravel the events of the day. I needed to cling to details. Had I attended class? Had I spoken at the assembly? The poem was a personal one, difficult to read in public. It was about my father being hospitalized on 9-11, 2001. On Thursdays, my husband Alan waits for me at the college while I attend creative nonfiction class. The day had barely started, but already the pavement reflected the heat. I wore a black top with an uneven hemline. The details stuck in my mind because Alan asked, isn't your blouse a little weird? The comment surprised me as Alan is kind and generous, but totally fashion blind. I told him it was my coolest top. He said it looked nice, but weird. weird. <laughs> Before saying goodbye, I reminded him I'd be late because the ceremony scheduled for 11 a.m. He kissed me goodbye, as he's done since we met in college way back in the Jurassic age. <laughs> he headed towards the library. I have no memory of the extraterrestrial who nabbed me on my way to room 411. However, I experimented a sensory awareness of things like brief images flashing on a screen. A sliver of my life was missing. The gap needed to be filled. I visualized myself, an archeologist, using red clay to reconstruct an ancient urn. Just before my abduction, I recalled the feel of keys in my palm. With my purse in the car, I'd gone back to check if it was locked. The sun startled me as it roared through the tree branches. The keys became hot and shot waves to my ankles. Gravity relinquished its hold. My feet no longer touched the ground. Was I levitating? The huge cumulus hovering above the planetarium must have been a decoy for the spacecraft. Accompanying this weightlessness, I had the sensation of being encased within a narrow chamber Strange words, as if spoken underwater, floated around me. Before blinding lights forced my eyes shut, I caught sight of blue hands in my peripheral vision. Cool pads placed over my ears converted piercing sounds into vibrations. Silence followed, and then a freezing sensation penetrated the left side of my cranium. Through my blurred vision, an egg-shaped mirror came into focus. It revealed a light-colored mole in the exact spot where my head had been penetrated. It had not been there before. Questions swarmed in my head, but never formed into speech. At the hospital, the curtains around my bed parted. Two familiar faces appeared, my worried husband and my daughter. Beth said Alan had, been, had spent hours looking for me. The campus poli police told him I had been taken by ambulance to the ER. I showed them the note. Beth explained the nurse wrote it because every few minutes I asked the same questions. Where am I? Where is my car? Even in my foggy days, it distressed me to think I was more concerned about the car than about my dear husband. I recognized my family, but every time the nurse came, I greeted her as if she were a new person. This terrified Alan, who feared I was in Gaga land for good. Pale and distressed, he squeezed my hand as if I were hanging off a lifeboat in a stormy sea. Rubber discs covered my chest, tubes protruded from openings on my hospital gown. Bit by bit, the emergency room staff became familiar. 
I was told I would be moved to another hospital for further tests. Alan, being near collapsed, agreed to go home. A second ambulance transported me to Scripps Mercy Hospital. The elevator stopped at the 11th floor. The room's large windows offered a panoramic view of the Hillcrest area. From the shadows cast by the buildings, it must have been evening. Alan contacted my writing teacher who confirmed I attended class that morning and read at the 9-11 memorial. She'd been concerned because after the assembly, the organizer asked me for a copy of my poem and I had answered, what poem? The alien must have duplicated me and sent my clone to class. They probably lifted my DNA from paper towels I used in the bathroom. Note to myself, use restrooms with the loud air dryers. <laughs> to help me think, I clicked my bed to a sitting position. Before dumping me in the parking lot, my doctors must have removed part of my brain that deals with memory. I needed to keep a written record, evidence. From my book bag, I extracted notebook and pencil. Writing with my finger in a clamp and glowing like an ET digit proved difficult. You'd think with the hospital, with the crucifix on the wall, they would have chosen something else in the third finger. <laughs> After eating a tray of snacks, I watched the 11 o'clock news. Every channel showed footage of the World Trade Towers crumbling. I relived the horror of that day. At that time, my father had been hospitalized. The sight of this world traveler immobilized and tethered to machines broke my heart. His tanned arms, now white as rice noodles, served as pincushions to needles. He who collected elegant shoes now wore purple booties. The hands that had guided our bikes when we were kids now lay shipwrecked by his sides. Formerly a news junkie, he now turned his eyes to the wall. He was 96 and wanted to live to be 100. And there I was, years later in a hospital, watching the 11 o'clock news about 9-11, on September 11, on the 11th floor, in room 1101. Earlier, I, or my clone, had attended class in room 411 and read a poem entitled 9-11 at a ceremony that started at 11 a.m. I, I rang for the nurse and blurted out about that uncanny number 11. She lowered my bed, fixed my pillows, patted my hand. Just a coincidence, she said. Buy a lottery ticket with lots of ones. That'll take the curse off. <laughs> the next morning, a doctor checked my balance. I did so well, I was tempted to show off and stand on one leg in the crane position, one of the few Tai Chi movements I remembered from Papa's instructions. I decided against it. I still hadn't completely proven my sanity. <laughs> Later, orderlies wheeled me through long corridors for tests. Technicians wearing blue nitrile gloves took over. I mentioned suffering from claustrophobia. That's okay, one said. There's a mirror inside, it helps. Just don't move. He fitted me with earplugs and slid me through a narrow tunnel. From this point on, their instructions became inaudible. I opened one eye. In the anti-claustrophobic mirror, I saw the mole on my skull. I was going to die. I prayed to the God of my childhood. Back in, room, in my room, an EEG attendant covered my head with suction cups attached to a thousand colored coated wires. She noticed I had a, hole, a mole on the left side of my skull. I know, I told her. Not wanting to end up in the psych ward, I didn't mention the alien abduction. The hospital tests showed no evidence of stroke or seizure. There was some brain degeneration attributed to normal aging. I clung to the word normal. The neurologist diagnosis, transient global amnesia. 
How re reassuring that my condition had a name. I liked the transient part. Global was comforting. Amnesia was problematic. My discharge papers said my symptoms were completely resolved. However, on the second page, a note stated, patient developed a transient bradycardia with a pose greater than two seconds at approximately 11 a.m. today. The nurse explained it meant my heart stopped. I didn't bring up the creepy 11. A week after my incident, I received an important piece of evidence from Southwestern College, a photograph of myself flanked by the American flag reading from a lectern. The certificate thanked me for my participation at the 9-11 anniversary memorial ceremony on September 11, 2014. All is well. I, or my clone, had performed. Am I worried about a recurrence? Certainly. I asked the doctor about it. He assured me it was unlikely to happen and added, but if you experience sudden loss of memory, call 9-11. <laughs> Ms. Claire Accomando, everybody. <laughs>